Hello fellow Scratchers, I'm Griff Batch and we're back for the second part of episode 19 of the Mario Tile Scrolling series. We have made great progress adding fire flowers to this game. We've got the power up collectible, fire Mario costumes, we can power up, we can fire the projectiles, only, well, they appear more like fireball cannons at present. So our next step is clear, let's get scratching. Right, so they are supposed to be bouncing, right? So they need gravity. We've certainly covered this enough times before to know what to do. First check that the fireballs are not falling at their maximum speed already. If speed y is greater than minus 12. Then we can apply gravity to them by changing speed y by negative 1.5. Feel free to play with these numbers to get a good feel to the bounce of the projectiles. Then we use our handcrafted move sprite y block to do the job. Okay, wow, we've created something special here. They certainly like to hug the floor, don't they? What we need here is some bounce. Now, we could look for speed y being zero like we did with the speed x, but we need to watch out for bounces off the ceiling too. So instead, we'll use an if falling equals zero, as this is only set to zero when we are physically on the floor and not a ceiling. Then, to bounce back up, we set speed y to 11. Where do I get these numbers from? They are just trial and error, nothing scientific or complex, just playing around with them like I encourage you to do too. Smash the green flag and bask in the wonder of our fantastic bouncing fireballs. Oh yeah, Fire Mario is turning out great. What do you think so far? Have you noticed anything missing? Yes, a few things perhaps, but right off, what about Mario's throw animation? It looks like he's just popping fireballs out of his head. Take a look in our Mario costumes. Scrolling down into the bottom, costumes 29 and 30 are the special throwing costumes I was talking about. We can certainly use these. Come back into the Mario code and we'll make a new variable named throw for this sprite only. We will use this to keep track of when to play back the throwing animation. Find the define handle keys fire script. Now after changing fireballs by one, we can also set throw to two. This is because we have two costumes to animate over when we throw a fireball. Next up, find the define paint sprite script. This is where we do all the costume switching. We'll try adding this right near the top as it overrides most of the other actions. So if throw is greater than zero, then well change throw by negative. Um, I'm going to say negative 0 0.25. That would take four frames to move on to the next throwing costume. Right. Put a switch costume to block before the change throw block and borrow the same join as we always do here. But because we want the costume frame number, add another join on the right hand side and write throw with a capital T on the left. And on the right, we want the number one or two. For that, we'll use the ceiling of throw. The ceiling operator rounds numbers up to the nearest whole number, so 1.1 would still round up to 2. Nearly forgot, pop in a stop this script at the end so we don't continue on and set the costume to something else. Testing the throwing animation now. It works, yes, and it looks great. Hurrah! Right, I wonder who of you has spotted one other issue we have been having that the projectiles can actually sometimes double register a hit. You can hear it sometimes as the collision sound gets played multiple times. This has actually been an issue for some time where a flipped enemy is able to be flipped over and over, especially using Cooper shells. This is such a quick fix, why don't we squish that now? We just need to prevent already flipping enemies from being flipped again. Click into the enemy sprite and find the when I receive move player after enemy script. This is where we check for collisions that will cause an enemy to be flipped. So slip a new if at the top of this script. And check if type equals flip. This is true when the sprite is already flipping, so simply stop this script to prevent us from even checking for a flip again against this sprite. I want to try to give that a test. 
The trick is hitting the same enemy twice. Okay, that looked good. Just a few more tests. Not sure I hit on that time. Yeah, that was a direct hit. And it looked good. Bug squashed. So, next bug. And that's if enemies drop off the bottom of the level. They don't despawn. This is not the end of the world, but it does now cause a problem if one of our fireballs falls off the bottom. Can you guess why? Yes, because our fireballs count will never go back down. We need to despawn on these fireballs. In the enemy sprite, find the define move enemy script. Then, after the initial check for a type of flip, we'll add in a new if, checking if y is less than negative 32. That should be just enough off the bottom of the screen for most situations. And we use our new delete clone custom block. That ensures it counts down the fireballs do. You know, while we are here, let's replace these other two usages of delete this sprite with our new delete clone custom block. Phew, good catch there. And lastly, since we are talking about sprites going out of range, let's find the define tick fireball script. Our fireballs should not keep on flying across the level once they move off the left or right side of the screen either. After moving in the x direction down here, let's check if the abs, the absolute value, of x subtract camera x is greater than 240. That means it's gone off the left or right side of the screen. Then also, Delete clone using the new custom block. That's easy to test, we just need to fire rapidly off the edge of the screen, like so. And if we can keep firing, then yay, it has worked. Splendid! Are you feeling as good about this as me? Well then, is now a good time for me to share with you a potential spanner in the works? Perhaps you've also been noticing one other flaw in our fireball implementation. And that is that a single fireball can kill a whole screen of enemies if you fire it off in just the right place. A cool perk perhaps, but not how Mario's fireballs are supposed to work. These ones are supposed to destroy one enemy, but also be destroyed themselves in the impact. So how do we pull that one off? Well, I tried a number of different ways of doing this before I settled on my favourite solution. It was especially difficult to get the projectiles to detect they'd collided with an enemy, but not trigger when two projectiles hit each other, wiping each other out. But this is a similar issue to our deadly enemy problem from the Cooper Shell episode. And so you may not be surprised that I have a similar solution. If you can't remember how we did that, I advise you to go and re-watch that episode. Here are the position tiles and move player after enemy event receivers that we set up to hide the non-deadly enemies while keeping the deadly Cooper shells visible all the time. To explain my thinking, let's click into the Mario sprite and find the, ah yes, the define game loop script. At present all sprites are visible after the move player event has run, but then in the move enemy event all non-deadly enemy sprites are hidden. Next up, the move player after enemy event runs, and this is also used in the enemy sprite to detect when a deadly enemy touches a non-deadly one, killing the enemy. This is now including fireballs hitting enemies. And lastly, in the position tile script, all the sprites are made fully visible again, end of game tick, and good job. But we now want to detect when an enemy fireball collides with a non-deadly enemy. For that, we need to hide all the fireballs but show all the other enemy sprites. We'll broadcast a new event for this, naming it Hide Fireballs. And then we'll broadcast another new event, naming it Check Fireballs, in which we can check for collisions. So drop both of these before the broadcast position tiles. Excellent. Now we just need to make this work. Click back into the enemy sprite. We start with the when I receive hide fireballs. If type equals fireball, then we hide it, of course. 
then stop this script, because there's little more to do. If this is any other visible enemy, then we actually want to show it. Just borrow that script from the position tiles event receiver. It should say if visible is greater than zero, then show. This sets us up to detect collisions between the fireballs and any other enemy. If you need a refresher as to why, then do rewatch the previous episode. Want to give that a quick test? Just to ensure things are working as before. Great. But to delete the fireballs correctly on impact, we need to code the when I receive check fireballs script. Again, if type equals fireball, and now we can borrow the scripts from the move player after enemy event. Show the single fireball, check if it touches any other visible enemy, do something, and then hide it again, ready for the next fireball to be checked. This showing and rehiding is what stops the two fireballs from destroying each other, as you will never have more than one visible at a time. But we don't want to cause a fireball enemy to flip, so remove that. Instead, we want to use our delete clone custom block. <laughs> right, that felt both simple and complex at the same time. I guess it's not much coding, but you have to get things set up just right in order for it to work. Let's give it a test. Are you ready for this? One fireball, one enemy test coming up. Boom, that is what I'm talking about. So let's test a bit more. This sure is fun, but it's hard to test whether two fireballs can collide with each other. So let's temporarily up the maximum number of fireballs. That's in the Mario sprite under handle keys fire. I'll just up the fireballs to 20. Yeah. And look at this. This is crazy satisfying. Why doesn't Mario have a 20 fireball limit? <laughs> anyway, certainly overlapping fireballs is not a problem here. Yeah, well, that brings a whole new dimension to the game, doesn't it? Now, although that was far too much fun, I'm going to pop the maximum fireballs back down to two. So there's not a lot left to do here. The final remaining tweak is to simply fix what happens when Mario gets hurt as Fire Mario. At present, we shrink back to classic Mario size, but in reality, at least in SMB3, we should only downgrade as far as the main Super Mario player state. We have an event receiver for this in the main Mario sprite. Find the when I receive Mario hurt script. The top script is handling invulnerability and losing a life. If you are mini Mario, so scroll down. And here we set invulnerability to 70. We now check for which Mario we currently are. Use an if else. And check for Mario equals fire. So the existing loop transformations can go in the else, but pop the broadcast to continue the game loop to after the if, as we'll want this in both cases. Right, to downgrade from Fire Mario to Super Mario, we set the Mario variable to Mario, with the capital M, and then force them to update their costume using a paint sprite. Now I want to pause the game and flash the player to indicate the change of state. That's easy. We use repeat 30 and keep the broadcast position tiles. The flashing is already accounted for by the invulnerability variable that we set. And here we go. So as Fire Mario, we just need to touch. Oh, hey, come back. Oh man, never trust a Gumba to do what you want. Fine, let's face off with a piranha plant. Brilliant, that was just what I was hoping it would look like. Just what I needed. Ah, another bug? Oh, the purple square. When we downgrade while still throwing a fireball. No. Quickly, back to the Mario Hurt receiver. 
We can prevent this easily by adding a set throw to zero after setting the invulnerability to zero, but before the animation plays. Phew! And that is such good news, because my fellow scratchers, this is most definitely the end of today's episode. I feel like we've had to do such a lot of scripting and I hope I didn't lose you. The end result though is so satisfying and I think we are ever closer to having covered almost everything that you will need to make the most incredible games of your own, be it Mario or any other tile-based platformer. If you have enjoyed this episode, then please do smash, click and wiggle that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to catch all the latest episodes the moment they come out. Do let me know how your projects are coming along in the comments below the video, or just say hi and tell me what your favourite video has been so far. Thank you though so much for watching and have a great week ahead. And scratch on guys.